This is Sports Stuff. Betting stuff. The chow. I was gonna say, Muff, we're missing it. The chow. I finally hit the hit the low. Not really low, but I finally had a losing. I one. hit the low, Alex. Yeah, you definitely hit the low. You hit the under five hundred. I hit the low. This is sports stuff betting stuff, the number one sports betting podcast coming out of the sports stuff with Jim and Muff Enterprise. I am your host. The original degenerate, Muff, joined alongside the Ohio Homer, the Ohio degenerate, the capo of the Midwest crack house, Jim. Good to see you. Good to see you. And last but certainly not least, the medical degenerate, the person who tells us about all the Gumbies. How do you do? (laughs) How do you do? That's me. I do well. I do well, Alex. How do you do? Not as well as I had been. But you got rid of the boonie hat, which is I know, an issue that's for me because I was, because I was it's cooling to help you in the trenches. I know, but I was cooling off, so I had to put on some winter gear. Okay, Maybe I could heat, <laughs> heat back up. That's just that's a that's a training camp. That's a summer hat. The boonie hat, right? Yeah, we're getting into the into the the cold months of cold month of November. Got to heat back up, warm I'm back up. You. I'm with you. All right, uh, what we're chatting about now are our totems or tokens of good luck. Alex has changed from the boonie hat to a, Alex, what are we going to call this? Toboggan. Toboggan toboggan of goodwill. It is, because we're because we're going to heat back up. We're going to heat back up. Alex is going to be on fire. And Jim's token is? I got the old Kraken hat. I'm going to stick with it. I almost, I almost considered ditching it, but I'm the wiener of this week, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it ride. All right, and I have my breakers sunglasses. I was making these cool before Dion even knew what they were. I'll stick with them. Don't leave them in the locker room. <laughs> I don't know if those would be the the victim of any theft. Compared to the other options, I'd say probably not. But you never know. They may be, they may be collateral damage. TBD. Um, so how this is going to work as usual is we're going to go over last week's best bets and we're going to go over this week's football slate in the pros and in the college foosball. As a reminder, our exclusive betting app is Fandle. Fandle. Hashtag Fandle. 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 Fragile. Fragile. Fandule must be Italian. <laughs> you can follow us on the action app. I am at C McPherson20. I am at the real medical degenerate. Have not posted a bet yet this year. I might though. You never know. And I am Bucketville Butcher. Bingo, bango, bongo. All right. Get into last week's recap. Starting with me. One and five. What, Jim? I, I feel bad. What? Why? Because like you were doing so well. Well, Alex was the winner. Still, still is leading. Still the leader in the clubhouse. I went one and five to put my overall record to twenty nine twenty six at a five twenty seven winning percentage on Thursday. I got started out with the Bills, just crapping the bed in the second half, <clears throat> losing to the Bucks. Well, not losing to the Bucks, but not covering the eight and a half, winning by six against the Bucks, and then we got into Saturday football. I took Penn State to cover; that did not happen. Took Florida plus the points, got ruined by the at Florida but not at Florida situation. It was still in Florida, but not at the swamp. A little bit of a misstep. Uh, I took Washington to cover twenty six and a half, traveling to the smart ass nerds at Stanford. That was a loss. We got into Sunday, and I went one and one as the Eagles covered against the Commanders, and the Falcons could not cover. In fact, they couldn't even win outright against Will Levis and the rejuvenated Titans. Yeah, we thought Will Levis coming in was going to help us. Did not. He he did not. (laughs) Moving on to Alex. Yeah, so I did the same thing in the NFL as you. Same bet, same same win loss. So. The, but my college games, I lost Florida plus 14 and a half. I lost Marshall minus four at Coastal Carolina. 
And I won Oregon minus six and a half at Utah. Two and three overall with a 571 winning percentage. Jim? I went five and three. The bets I lost were the bets I tailed. But I, the bets I, the only one I didn't necessarily tail was the Georgia game. I hammered that with you guys on my own free will. And I lost that Florida game. But I won the Oklahoma State against Cincinnati, won the Minnesota game against Michigan State, uh, lost Coastal Carolina. Uh, you lost Marshall and Cover Four. Yeah, lost that one. Uh, one Bad. coastal one by like twenty. Yeah. yeah, I was talking about that at the uh, with the work bets, and I think Marshall was done for me for the year. Yeah, I think there's been a permanent man on that. Um, because that's like the third time I think I've lost on. Yeah, a Marshall bet. Uh, Virginia Tech minus two and a half against Syracuse. Uh, lost the Buffalo Bills minus eight and a half to the Bucks. Won the Commanders. The Eagles. Uh, the Eagles minus six and a half at the Commanders. And then won the Packers. The, or the Vikings. Vikings minus one and a half at the Packers. I'm reading left to right and it's messing me up. You're reading right that. to left. Yeah. This isn't is Sanskrit, right. Jim. This is this is American English. I care about muff. Huh? The W's. <laughs> I want W's. Which puts Jim at five and three for the week, 30, 30, and one for the season with a 492 I'm winning percentage. No, no, we've we've made this consolation. You have come yeah. you've come to my side on this. It is what it is. Yeah. Um it's only upsetting to you now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. In our specialty picks in the Mike All Start Hit Stick Pick of the Week. I'm a pow, pow. Before we go on to these picks. I want to say that I take full blame for the records of these picks going down the shitter this week because I was the one that was like, wait, wait, wait. Maybe we mix it up, guys. And this is what happened. <laughs> what was the – so we in, uh, hit stick pick lo- loses to go to three and six for the year. We took the Falcons to cover two and a half at the Titans. What was the other game that was at play? I don't know. Like, I, I tried to think about it all week for this part of it. I can't remember, but I was like, it, it just mix it up. There was a there was a light flip for that. Yeah, there were two light flips for the specialty picks, and it was it was a bad call. Yeah, yeah. And in the Midwest mobster risky pick of the week. Get out of here. A loss, but it's okay. It's at six and three. That is still plus the money if you've been tailing us all year on that. Yeah, we yeah. took Kentucky money line hosting the volunteers of Tennessee. Tennessee wins that one. Bring that again to six and three, and in the Lolita Whale of a parlay, oh. we had some success, but not total victory as we lost real quick in this one on Saturday with Marshall not making it. All right, guys, in that one, but it's okay because the hit stick pick would have took us down anyway. Um, I put Eagles minus six and a half, and Jim had the Vikings in there. Both were winners, so we went two of the four in the parlay, but it ultimately goes to O and six. We're gonna get it. Let's get it. Just gotta get it once. That's all we need. Just get it once this year. All right. Anything else from last week? No. 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 Alex is changing his hat. I'm not changing anything. We're gonna we're gonna we're stick to the plan. Stick to the plan. Stick to the plan. The plan overall has been working, so we're gonna stick to the plan. Okay. I'm uh <clears throat> I had a new philosophy from last week. I'm gonna let ride. So, tail all of our losing picks. No, no, I, <laughs> I put in all my bets from the work bets because I'm I'm in my work pool, I'm up two games, so I automatically put those bets in. When you say you're up two games, explain what that means. Um it's similar Jim, to Jim up Jim up two games is I feel like a different way to explain it than most people may. No, so I pick, we pick five games, and then my co worker also picks five, picks the, from those five games. And whoever has the best outcome of those five games, their record, we, we're keeping track. So, so like, you put up five games that your co worker is forced to pick? No, we agree on the games. Like okay. I pick two, he picks okay. two, and then gotcha. one's a non power. 
five game mm-hmm. if we can if we can get there. We usually do. And then the the winner of the best record is the ultimate winner at the end. So does that, that mean you're up two weeks no. or are you two over five hundred? I'm two over five hundred. Okay. Yeah. So because we ought to get there, we got there. Yeah. What's the money line dog, Jim? I don't even I can't explain it to you. Don't I can point it out to you. How about that? When you get there? <laughs> is it is it like porn? You know it when you see it? Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, titties. Um, first, <laughs> in the NFL, uh, we are recording on Tuesday, which was the trade deadline. We had some movers and shakers, in which some of this will be encapsulated into our discussion of this week's games. Others did not necessarily make the cut because some of these teams aren't playing this week. Uh, first off, we have Chase Young going to the 49ers from the Commanders. Bum, ba-dum, bum, 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 bum. Hmm. Is he well, even healthy right now? I think he's about to be. He gets another week. Josh Dobbs was in on this. Did you not get that in there? That he he's on a team that plays games. this week. What do you mean? Josh Dobbs went to what team, Jim? The Vikings. Does the Vikings play this week? I thought so. I'm wrong. Yeah, they play at the Falcons. Yeah. So when we talk about that game, he has that listed. Uh... Words, Jim. We, we read them left to right, and we listen to them from front to back. Gotcha. So the Niners don't play this week, hence Correct. you're talking about it now. <laughs> yes. Yep. And mm. Donovan Peoples-Jones comes to the Lions from the Browns. The Browns. Giving them another wide receiver. Um, gotcha. They have been lacking outside of, at this point, Sam Laporta. Amon Ross State Brown, Jameson Williams is back for the Lions, but has been slow to regain his form after his gambling suspension was – uh, lifted or at least reduced. Jameer Gibbs came out last night. Yeah, Monday Night Football. Jameer Gibbs had his coming out party to the world, but here in a couple of weeks, Dave Montgomery comes back, and I feel like that's a good thing for the Lions as they share those carries in that backfield. And this had already happened, but Randy Gregory went to the 49ers from the Broncos. So those are the <clears throat> the moves that happened for teams. Not playing this week, which brings us to Thursday football with the Titans traveling to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. Steelers favored by three over under 36 and a half. The Titans picked up safety Terrell Edmonds from the Eagles. I think that happened prior to Tuesday, but um, that has happened. Uh, The Titans on a short week have a lot of questionable players including Derrick Henry, DeAndre Hopkins, who I would expect both of them to play in this game. Uh, Ryan Tannehill is still doubtful, so I think they already announced that Will Levis is going to be I mean, starting. Yeah, say even if even if he's healthy, I'd start Will Levis after the performance he put on last week. Yeah. Um, the Steelers are still without Pat Fryermuth. Um, Kenny Pickett is slated to play. They came out in the press conference today. And... I think mean, Fitzpatrick is not going to play. Okay, I didn't even see the injury I, report. I read that he was not going to play. You're right. That was weird. I was going through the injury report on where I typically get all yeah. these. I didn't see him on it, which was weird. Um, but yeah, I assumed he wasn't. Um, Cam Hayward is questionable to come back from his injury. Um, we'll see where that goes. And uh, KZ, who is the replacement for Fitzpatrick, is probable to play in this game. Um, this is Thursday night football, and I probably would have stayed away from this anyway, but given it's Thursday, even more reason to stay away. Agreed. That was the most worthless info we've ever given on this show. Eh, I don't know. You like, injures weren't going to bet on it. I don't need an injury report for this. Katie Pickett's playing, Jim. That's a big deal. Mitch Trubisky was actually slated to go to his press conference, and once Pickett came out and said, I'm playing, Mitch Trubisky just walked out and did not do his presser. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Getting into Sunday football starting at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time in Germany. The Dolphins playing the Chiefs. Chiefs favored by two and a half over under 50 and a half. The Chiefs picked back up McCole Hartman from the Jets. And obviously the Dolphins had already picked up Chase Claypool from the Bears. Uh, Bears. I mean, the Chase Claypool effect is still, still very, still very real. And the Dolphins are not doing well since they picked him up. I think the better question is, Taylor Swift going to be there? 
No, there's actually a lot of speculation about uh, the Taylor Swift situation this past week because she did not travel to Denver. I thought she was on her tour now. Well, I think it starts next week. November. Yeah, but she's probably practicing, right? I don't think she needs to practice, Alex. Ooh, is that like a, she's that damn good and you're secretly a Swifty? I think at this point she knows what she's doing and she can just show up and roll the ball out in the field and play. But part of the discussion was Patrick Mahomes had the flu. He was probably around his wife and Taylor Swift would have been in the, uh, the probably the private box with Mahomes, wife. So she didn't want to get sick. Very possible. Okay. Very possible. So uh, I'm going to stay away from this game. Both teams traveling to Germany. Let's just not get involved. I'll watch it. Away from in America. Bingo. Jim. I think the Dolphins win this game, but I'm not. That's not going on my card. Fair enough. Is this because of what the Chiefs did last week? I think that the Dolphins will travel better because shorter distance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like an hour and a half, two hours maybe. Yeah. Do they probably have to both go through like New York to get there? Which means. Kansas City may actually have less travel. Why would they have less travel? They got to go to New York from Kansas City. Isn't it a longer flight from Miami to New York? I think Miami's got a direct flight to Germany. Okay, that may be true. All right, it's getting into Sunday afternoon game, starting with the Rams at the Green Bay Packages. The Packers minus three over to 39 and a half. Rams uh, are not sure of the status of Paku and Nakoa and Matt Stafford. Packers Mm. are unsure about Jair Alexander and Campbell at linebacker. Part of me wants to take the Packers. Real bad. I would lean the Packers, especially with the unknown of Matt Stafford. Um, And just the way the Rams have been playing recently. But the Packers aren't setting the world on fire either. Yeah. So I'm going to stay away from this one. Yeah, me too. It's... Got no good written on either side as far as my money. Yeah. Next, we have the Bucks at the Texans. Texans favored by three. 40 is the point line. Baker Mayfield is questionable for the Bucks. He's questionable, but do we think he's going to play? I think he's still going to play. Yeah. So, okay. I asked that because I'm leaning towards the Bucks on this. I'm staying away. Okay. Next, we have the Commanders at the Patriots. Patriots favored by three and a half over under 40 and a half. Patriots had previously picked up J.C. Jackson from the Chargers. Obviously, the Commanders have lost Chase Young as well as Montez Sweat. <clears throat> and uh, questionable for the Commanders is Curtis Samuel at wide receiver of note. And the Patriots have continued to be without the services of um, Gonzalez, Judon, uh, Boot, Booty at wide receiver. He's one of their – and Bourne just went on the IR – so, um, all of this all said, I am still going to back the Patriots in this one. Hmm. I don't like that pick either. I don't, like your I don't know about that, but I'm not going to talk you out of it, but I'm not sure about that one. I'm not sure I can talk you out of it. No, you're not going to talk me out of that one. All right. The Patriots, I think the commanders are in a spot now where they were selling. And they're <clears throat> going to start rebuilding. Obviously, they didn't get anything on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, but I think the Patriots are able to move the ball against the Commanders. And Bill Belichick's going to put together a sound defensive plan against Sam Howell. Next, we have the Bears at the Saints. Saints favored by 7.5 over under 41. As just discussed, <clears throat> the Bears picked up Montez Sweat. From the commanders. Hmm. Make you sweat. Make you sweat. Uh, we still have Tyson Bajan at quarterback this week for the Bears. And Justin Fields probably out, out at least one week, maybe two more weeks to be determined. Uh, so <clears throat> in this game, I'm going to stay away. The Saints. I think still win this game. I just don't know about that seven and a half number. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. I don't. That's a little high for me, but I do think the Saints win. 
Jim? I like the I like the Saints here. You like them? Like you love them? You gotta have them. them. I, the spread's high. I'm leaning the Saints. I'm debating it right now. It's a debate. Debate. Next we have the Vikings at the Falcons. Falcons here by four and a half. Over under 37, the Vikings picked up Josh Dobbs from the Cardinals to <clears throat> presumably replace Kirk Cousins. Who's uh, playing quarterback for the Cardinals? For the Falcons or for the Cardinals? For the Cardinals. Uh, Whoever is next. Uh, Kyler Murray is probably going to be coming back in the next week or two, but I don't, okay. know, I don't know who's going to be picking up that slack probably for the next week. Gotcha. Uh, um, the Bears also had picked up Cam Akers previously from the Rams. Vikings. I'm sorry, the Vikings. And the Vikings traded their guard, Ezay Cleveland, to the Jaguars. The Falcons picked up Kendravius Street from the Eagles and Van Jefferson from the Rams. Um, for the Falcons. Well, Van Jefferson cost them, not cost them the game, but. Yeah. I mean, he, well, he also, I think, was their leading receiver for the day. <laughs> yeah, but it counted, man. Yeah. So we'll see where this game goes. Falcons, um, who knows gonna be who's going to be at quarterback? Is it going to be Desmond Ritter, Ritter? Is it going to be Taylor Heineke? Um, and the Vikings obviously are going to be trotting out a new starting quarterback in this game. So uh, I would lean the Falcons, but I'm going to stay away. Yeah, I'm staying away. I don't after the Falcons game last week. I don't trust them, but Jim, Jim, I'm debating it, Muff. I'm looking some stuff up. Well, we're, I'm debating. We're, we're podcasting. You have to speak your thoughts. I think I'm staying away. I lean the Falcons in this one. Okay. That's where I'm leaning. Next, we have the Cardinals at the Browns. Browns favored by 7.5 over in a 37.5. There is a chance of rain in this game. Cards obviously just shipped Josh Dobbs out of town. They're without James Conner still, as well as Zach Ertz. Um, the Browns really have nothing of note aside from Deshaun Watson is questionable. Surprise, surprise. I am going to take the Browns to cover 7.5 in this game against a just probably just dog shit Cardinals offense. The Browns defense is their strong suit. I think they it's can probably get... cold as shit. In Cleveland, yeah. And that rain. Is it is it rain or is it an icy mix? I don't think it's gonna be freezing. I think it's gonna be a cold rain if it happens. I think it was like 40 to 50% chance. I don't think you're wrong in that pick whatsoever. I like it. Next week. Yeah, actually, I actually like it too. All right. Next we have the Seahawks at the Ravens. The Ravens is favored by five and a half over to 42 and a half. The Seahawks have picked up uh, defensive line and Leonard Williams from the Giants. <clears throat> and the Ravens still are without much of their some many defensive players, as well as additionally, Williams at safety is questionable for this game. Uh I'm staying away just because. The Seahawks are, at this point, I don't think we can call them sneaking competitive. They're just competitive. I know, and that's kind of makes me want to take the Seahawks plus the points. Ooh, I was going with the Ravens. Ugh. Yeah, and that's why I'm going to stay away because I can I can justify either side. So in that case, I'm not going to flip that coin. I'm debating it. I'm debating it. Jim does a lot of debating. Yeah, because I got I got my five. I don't want to go over eight this week. Trying to be strategic. What strategic by winning? Yeah. Okay. I think that's all of our strategies, Jim, is to pick winners. And listen, man, you're not. I'm just listen. I'm good. Don't try. Don't try to bully me, Muff. I'm don't not bullying me. You're so making sure your me. strategy is to win. I don't know if there's any other strategy. I say no to bullying. Okay, don't bully me. Okay, say no to bullying. I say no. Punch people in the face. Exactly. In the four o'clock slate, we have the Colts at the Panthers. Colts favored by two and a half, 44 and a half is the points line. Gardner Minshew still starting at quarterback for the Colts, obviously. Um, and Panthers, nothing new as far as they're off their first win. They are coming off their first win. Uh, this is at, at Carolina. 
I I'm staying away just because I don't know what team's going to show up either side. I agree with that. I'm staying away with that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And presumably the matchup of the week, the Cowboys at the Eagles, Eagles served by three over under 46. How do you call it the matchup of the week when we got the Bengals and Bears or Bengals and Bills? Because Cowboys and Eagles are both have better records. I, I don't give a fuck about that. Why? I think the Eagles win this. Do you think the Eagles win by three plus? Yeah, I'm gonna hammer that home. Okay. I actually am on the Eagles here. Yeah, I'm gonna hammer that home. All right. Even after a strong performance last week by the Cowboys. Yeah, I don't care. I'm yeah, still yeah. Eagles, so. I'm gonna <laughs> Usually if the Cowboys have a strong performance, that means they're yep. bound to let down their fans this week. They're due. Yep. Stephen A's ready to go. He's queued it up already for this one on Monday morning. Yep. All right, yeah, I'm I'm gonna stay away. Gonna stay away. The Giants at the Raiders. Raiders favored by two and a half over into 37 and a half. <clears throat> Daniel Jones is probable for this game back at quarterback. <laughs> Thank goodness for them. They don't have to try out Tommy DeVito, who had zero passes, if I remember correctly. Um, he had a touchdown run. <laughs> he did a touchdown run, but they, they don't talk shit on DeVito. I'm I'm I still like the guy. Be, what do you know about him? serviceable backup what do you know about him backup. he is danny's nephew no he's not we <laughs> clarified that we debunked that myth already jim <laughs> you tried to tell us that once and we, we caught you <laughs> serviceable <laughs> backup. uh the raiders uh did not ship Devonte adams as many had thought may happen in the trade deadline but he is not a happy camper with jimmy g not being able to get him the ball i mean it was so bad the rate that that game was nowhere near the score it should have been. Like, the the Alliance settled for field goals on their first three trips down the field, but getting down the field was so easy. I mean, it was it should have been, like, 50 to nothing. Yeah, you're Doc not seven. wrong. They earned the Josh Jacobs touchdown, I'll give him that. But holy smokes. I mean, Jimmy G was just missing wide open. Devontae Adams would be wide open, and the ball would just go 20 yards away from him. <laughs> I, I, it was bad. It was like even one of those games where even the announcers are like not really sure they can find something positive to say. <laughs> yeah, they, they they were struggling. They were they were like, oh well. Uh, well. Joe, Joe, Joe Buck was on the Strokes bus. Yeah, <laughs> trying so to like struggling. maintain some some middle ground, and it was not. So it, it was tough. Which makes me want to take the Giants plus two and a half here. I really thought about it, but. This could it's be that. Giants. This could be that we're going to throw the ball to Devonte Adams fifteen times and try to make him happy again. And yeah. let's be honest: if you throw the ball to him enough, he's going to figure out a way to get the ball. Yeah, exactly. So that's yeah. that's that's my concern going that way. And the Giants are the Giants this year, right? Yeah. No, I agree. So TBD. I will say in that Monday night game, Josh Day Jacobs had a uh, like a ten to fifteen yard reception in garbage time that netted me a win in fantasy football by less than a point over Hugh in the podcast fantasy football league. Jim, how'd you do this week? Took my first L to Sam. You did. I remember you gave Alex a lot of shit about losing to your wife. You lost to Sam who has a worse record than your wife. I took my first L. It happened. Karma's bitch. <laughs> I'm seven and one. Oh, but that's a slippery slope once you lose that first one. Seven yeah, that's what happened to me. I'm just kidding. I'm pretty sure I've been losing since the beginning. <laughs> and I'll, I, you know, I might lose the next one. Who knows? But I'm seven and one. I'll take it. I think I lost all of my games this, all of my leagues this week. If I'm being completely honest, I'm not okay. in a year. It'll be all right. Things not happen. Yeah. All right, and in Sunday night football, the Bills at the Bengals. Bengals favored by two and a half over under forty eight and a half. In what Jim is dubbing the matchup of the week. The Bills picked up Rasul Douglas from the Packers, and they signed Leonard Fournette. Touchdown, Lenny. Just in time to get ready for the playoffs. Playoffs? Playoffs. I but... think that's a, two good pickups there. If the if the Bengals look like they looked last week, I Bengals by two and a half easy. But but that those two pickups make me nervous. Yeah, I, I'm going to stay away, but I think it'll be a fun game to watch. This will be like... This is like the the Bengals going up against in in the boxing terms that that boxer who has always been around and is like that stepping stone. If the Bengals win this, then I think we will say, okay, they're back. 
And if the Bengals lose this, it's like, okay, what's the rest of the season going to look like? Yeah, I agree with that. The Bills win, I think we just still status quo for them. Yeah. In my mind. It depends. If their two signees pop off, I think we go, oh, they made the right moves. Mm-hmm. You know. Oh. And in we'll Monday see. night football, we have the Chargers at the Jets. Chargers favored by three over under 41 and a half. The Jets sign guard Roger Saffold to the practice squad with the intent to promote him to the active roster and most likely going to be playing at some point in the near future. I don't think the Chargers made any moves aside from losing J.C. Jackson, right, Jim? Yeah. All right. Um, Jets still without center Connor McGovern. And Randall Cobb is still questionable for them. I'm going to go with the under in this game. The under has been the most profitable football bet. The under in the NFL has been the most profitable football bet so far this year. I'm hammering the Chargers. Alex? Why am I doing that? No, as You're Alex, what? Alex was saying when you said that. Oh, oh I just said I, I don't argue with that as far as on that game. The under or the taking the charter? The under. Okay. Jets have a strong defense. We all know that they have their struggles offensively, even though it's against the Chargers who have not necessarily been gangbusters on the defensive side. I think the Jets just are not good. They're going to rely on Brees Hall. They rely on maybe getting one big passing play for the day. Um, I think the Jets limit the Chargers, and this one stays under. I think they pop off. Who? The Chargers. Still could happen. They... Their wide receiver situation has been like emerging, but not emerging well. Like, Keenan Allen had a bad game last week. I call the Chargers. That's what it's like to be a Chargers fan. Yeah. Always emerging, but never. I wish they would tank so bad this year to, to get up Marv. Oh, okay. That would just be great. Probably, Listen, I mean, I'm allowed to like that, Alex. Like it, it's okay. I had to that's big to balls that. for you to say that. The amount of times that you say shit about things I like. Listen, Alex, I had to listen to a 10 minute injury report about you yins are bullshitters. So give me my one comment about wish they would tank for Marv. Even if they tank now, they probably still wouldn't get it. I mean, at this point, I mean they can just continue to go for it on fourth down at all stages of the game. I wish. <laughs> It may work out for them. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe it's, maybe it's the selective fourth down calls that get them in trouble. They used to do it all the time. My luck, Dabo or Jim Harbaugh will leave college football and become the coach of the Chargers. I think there's a better chance of Harbaugh doing that, although there is speculation that the NFL doesn't even want him if things play out how some exactly. anticipate it will. Well, there's a lot of there's lots of things out there saying that what they're doing is legal, Jim, but we'll talk about that on Sunday. You cheating bastard. Which brings us into college football. Take it away, gents. Wake Forest to Duke. Duke minus 12 and a half. Over under 51 and a half. I think Wake covers that. I don't I'm not putting money on that, but I think Wake covers that. Uh, like my slate is full. <laughs> But I really would take Wake to cover that. Or unless they say that quarterback's coming back. Is there any reports on this? Uh, I think if Riley Leonard, yeah. What's the answer, Alex? I think Riley Leonard played last week. Really? I, I thought that that's why the spread was so. It was low. the ind- it was the indecision last week. I think. Oh, okay. I thought he didn't play. Well, maybe they don't cover then, and I might take that back. <laughs> Duke's quarterback plays, they ain't covered. Hmm. Without the quarterback, it's a dog fight. Boston College at Syracuse. Syracuse minus two and a half, over under 51 and a half. I'm doing it, boys. Hammer home, my Boston College pick of the year. Hmm. <laughs> I was assuming right. that you were probably going to have some thought on this game. Give me, give me Boston College on this one. That's a Friday football. We have we have action happening as we record. I believe. I think it's yep, Tuesday night action. We're in the yeah, action Buff- season. Buffalo and someone maybe. 
is it Toledo? Because I know Bowling Green's tomorrow night. Hold the phone. Holding. Buffalo Toledo. Yeah. Yeah. Toledo is up 24 7 at halftime. No shit. They were underdogs, I think, in that game. We also have Central Michigan and Northern Illinois. Hmm. All right. Wisconsin at Indiana. Wisconsin minus nine and a half. Over under 45 and a half. Muff, what say you, homie? I have. I don't want to be on any side of this. I mean, I would lean Wisconsin to cover. Okay. Alex? I would lean Wisconsin if I had to pick one of the two, but I will not have put my money on it. Buff, what did you think of Indiana last week? I mean, I've already given my feedback of this game on the, the regular episode, and that was the... That's <clears> not <throat> what I asked. What did you think of Indiana? That, I, I want to know what you thought of Indiana. Indiana had a, a couple big plays that helped open up the game for them. Um, there were breakdowns in coverage for Penn State, but Indiana has always has an opportunity because they take they take shots down the field. I mean, that's just Indiana. So, are they a good team? Are they an okay team? Like, are they at, like the bottom of the barrel as most people try to put them this year? I mean, in the Big Ten, they're they're definitely in the bottom in the bottom tier within the big 10 outside of conference. I mean, if they play bottom, other bottom tier teams, I think they're going to be competitive across the board. Okay. In the, in the major conferences. Before we begin, are these rankings, the AP rankings or the college football playoff rankings? Do we even know? They're whatever FanDuel had posted at 6 PM on Tuesday. They're not the college football playoff rankings. Okay. (laughs) Number 12, Notre Dame at Clemson. Notre Dame minus three and a half, over under 45 and a half. Prior to the show, we were like, why the hell is this so low? And then we found out the starting tight end and leading receiver for Notre Dame is out. I still think I'm going to take Notre Dame minus three. So, again, coworkers and I, prior to getting the knowledge of the tight, of the starting tight end being out, thought about even taking the alternate spread of minus seven and just rolling it. But now that we know that the starting tight end is out, I lean with you, Alex. I might flirt with that. I don't know if I'm making a best bet. I, that means that something has to be eliminated because I don't want to go above eight. But I think it's a good pick, Alex. It's on my list of potentials there. I think it's not a bad pick. At, at Clemson, I'm staying away. Is it really that home field thing's a thing for you? Has, has it not always been? But I mean, like, okay, I'm with you. I agree. I agree. Number 25, Kansas State at number seven, Texas. Texas minus four and a half, over under 50 and a half. Alex, what say you? I lean Texas if I have to pick one of the two. Kansas State has looked okay, but I think Texas (laughs) wins. And I think if they win, they're going to win by a touchdown. you, You need Texas to win. Yeah. You need them on that wall. Oh, yeah. No, I know. Yeah. I, they I use words like it. bravery, honor. What the they... horns. <laughs> Texas A&M at number 11, Ole Miss. Ole Miss minus three, over under 53 and a half. It pains me not to take Ole Miss. Give me Ole Miss in this game. Oh, fucking I think Alex. Jimbo Fisher is just out there hoping everyone has fun God at this point. Damn it, Alex, shut up. I think mm, that I sad, genuinely sad Jimbo. Think Jimbo is just hanging out, hopes everyone has fun. He doesn't really seem to have much of a competitive edge. And I think Ole Miss is trying to tear through what they can of the SEC. Give me Ole Miss minus three. It wasn't going to take much. And when I saw this this afternoon, I said, if Alex says something, it's going to be easy to talk me into this. And son of a bitch, you did it. I did it. I didn't have to say much. I know. That's what I said. It's not going to take much. Hammer that son of a bitch home. Give it to me. Number three, Ohio State at Penn State's rival Rutgers. Ohio State minus 18 and a half over under 42 and a half. I don't think Ohio State. I don't think Ohio State covers. Worried about old Greggy. I am. I am worried about. I think they win. I don't think they cover. Rutgers is scrappy. 
I mean, they couldn't cover against Wisconsin. Greg is a tough son of a bitch, and I think secretly hates Ryan Day. I mean, he doesn't keep much a secret. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, I feel like we know about keep it. things secret. That's true. He's, he's not the one that's going to like hold back. But remember last year when he ran across the field at Ryan Day? I, I, shake I, his, he went to shake his hand yeah. aggressively. Yeah. I don't think I don't think Ohio State covers. <laughs> Army at number 17, Air Force. Air Force favored 18 and a half, over under 31 and a half. Pew, pew, shots, explosives. Give me Air Force to cover. Stay on the field. Go to 9 and 0. The Air Force is good this year. Air Force is good. The Army's not. Right. Okay. No All offense. Right. I still love America, but the opportunity for the for the armchair division of the armed forces to do what they got to do against the grunts. Well, it says let it ride. Okay. James Madison, number 23 at Georgia State. James Madison favored five and a half over under 54 and a half. I am riding the James Madison train. Give me free JMU all the way to a cover in this game. I thought about this one. But I just I'm so afraid they're gonna have a letdown spot somewhere. Georgia State is cursed. I will not do it. They're gonna be no. cursed against James Madison because James Madison's win by 10 plus. I hope, Muff. I hope, but this is voodoo for me. Iowa at Northwestern, Iowa favored four and a half over under 31 and a half. I am gonna do it, guys. I'm doing it. Probably the lowest under total, maybe of the season. I'm still going for the under 31 and a half. Woo. I don't knock you for it. I can see this game being seven to three. I mean, even I, if it's it 10 to seven, offense. even if it's 10 to 17, it's not going to go higher than 10 to 17. Brian Ferentz is already out. They've stated he's gone. He's gone at the end of the year. Yeah. Boy, all, he's, all he's going to do is take make right. the cut. All, all, he, all he's going to do now is take stupid chances that's going to keep Northwestern in this game. And Dad's going to have to come over and be like, hey, quit being a dumbass. we got to win. He's like, ah, but we don't have to score any points to win, do we? <laughs> Let the defense score a touchdown. I'm staying away from that game. <laughs> Muff, you're a wild man. Number 14, Missouri at number one, Georgia. So I – okay. So part of me feels like I need to jump on the Missouri plus 15 and a half here and stand by <laughs> – Stand by my take that this could be that Missouri's good. You can Georgia looked good last week, and Georgia looked like Georgia. I don't know yeah. what you're. No, I think Georgia for the first time last week looked like Georgia. Yeah. Like if there the was ever a time country. to put your put your <laughs> foot in the ground and say like here it comes, that would be it. I'm I know, and I have made the point that like, do I need to put my money where my mouth is with Missouri? It's I, I might. We'll, 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 I'll give you my final answer at the end. Okay. Number 10, Oklahoma at Oklahoma State. Stay away from this game. Oklahoma <laughs> minus five and a half, over under 61 and a half. Yeah. I'm taking Oklahoma. Ooh. Taking the away team in Bedlam. I am taking Oklahoma. I think they're going to come out with a chip on their shoulder. They could, and it's Bedlam. I just I but don't it's think also Oklahoma, Bedlam and Oklahoma State. I don't think Oklahoma State's played consistent enough. I think the last game for Oklahoma State was much like an upset for Ohio State. I think it's just like, oh, you got me, and then they come out and just go yeah. gangbusters after. Well, Kansas isn't a bad team. People want to write yeah. off Kansas. Yeah, I think this is. I think Oklahoma State's worse than Kansas by far. Yeah. Nah. Yeah, I agree. So it's just I'm, bedlam. I'm just not buying into the bullshit. I'm gonna I'm gonna okay. thumb my nose at it. Okay. That's fair. Number nine, Penn State at Maryland. Penn State favored nine and a half over under 50 and a half. Muff, why are, is it is it Maryland scoring points that makes people not want to take the under here? Because I would take the under here. I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem with you taking the under. Um, I'm going to stay away just because I need Penn State to bounce back offensively somewhere along the line. 
to make this happen. I think Penn State <clears throat> it will not have a problem overall with Maryland. I think they're going to correct themselves. I don't think Manny Diaz is, is going to let two weeks in a row of a throwing team get the big plays. So I think Penn State keeps it in front of them. Penn State's defense, if they do that, is very successful. Um, but I just don't know enough. I just don't feel confident in the offense right now to do what they've got to do. I think Maryland's on a down slope. I think they don't get much offensive off, offensively off on Penn State. I think this is leave them alone. They don't know any better. But I also think Penn State still struggles offensively, much like Ohio State did with Maryland. So um, I, I'm I would take the under. I'm going to sneak a game in here. Virginia Tech at Louisville. Louisville minus nine and a half. I mean, Virginia Tech's been competitive for the past few weeks. Um, Louisville's been streaky. I, I, I'm i staying away if you're going to put okay. that out there. I would stay away because I want Louisville to beat the shit out of Virginia Tech and come in gangbusters against Florida State. So out of, out of just spite, I don't. I don't want to see Louisville lose. So I don't Well, yeah, to... no, I would I would go with Louisville to cover there. But I don't want to put my money there. You know what I'm saying? Like Yeah, I got you. I shy away. You don't want to be hurt emotionally and financially. Yeah, I would be so pissed. <laughs> That's probably the game where if they did lose, other than Ohio State getting caught, I would be very very angry. I got gotcha. you. Illinois put a minus one and a half over under 42 and a half. Give me Minnesota. Minnesota. I think he's rowing the boat. And I think Illinois is just not not it. Now, I'd like to see, hopefully, some offensive production out of Minnesota. A little bit more, but we'll see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fair. Marshall at App State. App State minus three and a half. Nope, not doing it. <laughs> Moving on. I want to bet App State because I know, pissed, I know, you know, but I'm not even doing that because then Marsh will win. Right. This is just bad, bad, bad poo poo. I agree with that. This blows my mind. This was another game I meant to talk to you about before yes. the show. Number 22, Kansas at Iowa State. Iowa State favored two and a half over under 53 and a half. What are we missing, Alex? Um, I'm not really sure what we're missing. Iowa State has looked better as the season went on, but and I don't know if they're expecting Kansas to have a down week, but I am taking Kansas minus two plus two and a half. Okay. I think Iowa State typically plays tough at home, and I think this is a conflicting styles situation. It's who who's going to execute their style the best. I pick Kansas. I think you're a good bet right there, bud. BYU at WVU, WVU at, by the way, at WVU, night yep. game. Mm-hmm. Night game, Morgantown. Night so game Hall- post-Halloween in Morgantown. So just to mention, did you guys see BYU's poor coach accidentally said he can't wait to hear Country Roads? He was trying to be nice, and like he's like, yeah, I love being part of the Big 12, new traditions, <laughs> but I can't wait to listen to him sing Country Roads. And everyone was like, <laughs> you know they do that when they win. Like that's like the Q Country Roads is like when we win. <laughs> He walked into it. He didn't mean to. But BYU's quarterback <laughs> did play for Pitt when they beat us last year. And there's like a video circulating of him saying F West Virginia. So I think that'll fire him up on a on a Saturday night in Morgantown. W wins this one. Yeah. I'm surprised the spread's 10, but W wins this one. Yeah. So Purdue at the Cheating Bastards. Cheating bastards favored 32 and a half. Alleged cheating bastards. Alleged under still alleged 50 and behavior. And a half. Dude. Still alleged behavior. Yeah. What cheating. are you gonna do if this doesn't cut, turn into anything? I I really don't care. They're still cheating bastards. But if it's not substantiated, how can we do this? At least with the Astros, we knew. Cheating bastards. Hmm. So says an Ohio State fan. That's fine. No, not gonna change my opinion. I'm taking mission to cover. I don't think that's a bad bad take. 32 and a half. Michigan's just been mopping the floor with people and I think they've got Of course got... they are muff. <clears throat> well, allegedly, I understand why you think that, but I, I think they were still beating teams anyway this year, up to this point. 
I don't think they need to, to cheat to get to the, the cover against Purdue. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> Number 13, LSU. Again, so are we not putting Bama's ranking up anymore? Are we? I mean, can't get them all, buddy. I just want to know, like, was that done on purpose? That's no, all. not done on purpose. Against, I think, number 10? Uh, AP, AP has him at 8. Number 8, Alabama. AP Bama and favorite. the college football have him at 8, so there you go. Oh, okay. My disrespect to Nick. I'm sorry, Nick. Uh, Bama favored by 3, over-under 60 and a half. I kind of like the over here, but I am taking Bama minus three. Yeah, I like I like the overthought there. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go with it, but I I like that thought more than the Bama to cover. I need to see Brian Kelly lose again. I don't know that I don't know. I'm I'd be nervous if I was Bama LSU coming in. I think Nick's got a stride. If this was LSU at home, I'd be all over LSU. I would too. I don't think you're wrong there, but I. Nicky at home, and I think he's hitting his. I think Pat McAfee's rejuvenating him. Mm-hmm. I think he's feeling good. Number five. Uh, talk about an, just an odd couple. I, mean, I know it works, man. Oh, it does work, but it, it shouldn't work. <laughs> Honestly, I think that's what they were shooting for with Corso and him in the beginning. But I think Corso just doesn't have it. And he's just too old to play along anymore. Yeah. Number five, Washington at 24 USC. Washington favored three and a half, over under 75 and a half. I, I want to be on the over for this because I do think there's going to be a lots of points. Over I 75 think... and a half? Yep. They're How many points at, do you think they're going to score? They're looking at like a 38-35 game. I like Washington to cover in this. All right. Yeah, I, yeah I'm not going to say anything against it. Washington had a down week last week. They may have been looking ahead to this matchup, so I, I think Washington comes out ready to go. This is another Penix-Heisman moment, potentially. I don't care for this game at all. You're super anti-Washington and Michael Penix for some reason. I haven't figured He's it out. Anti-Pack. Yeah. This is a 7.30 Pack game. We should want this to be great. We've been clamoring for them, the best, the better games, the pack not to be 10 o'clock games. We finally start getting them, and then Jim just poo poos every single one of them. No, thank you. SMU at Rice, SMU minus 12 and a half, over under 58 and a half. Give me Rice all day long. JT Daniels at Rice. <laughs> I want them. They've covered the spread. I think it's. Six out of the last seven. Mm-hmm. Rice has been a covering machine this year. I've kind of watched that just because that's where JT Daniels ended up. And they can put up points. I'm not real worried about it. Yes, SMU beat the dog shit out of Tulane. Yes, Rice didn't put up as many points as you would think they should have against Tulane. Still think they covered this game. This one might bite me. But this is where I'm going with it. You've had so many other games that you've been like on the edge or like, I wish I would if my sleep and you're like, ah, this one might bite me, but I'm going to go with the other ones over this one. I want this one. Mm-hmm. Number 20, UCLA at Arizona, UCLA minus two and a half over under 51 and a half. This is another one of those Arizona. Why? Like they've I, just I, been you in those up. games. You screwed me up when I was looking at the slate. Because you said that last week, and I was like, is this is this the one? But I eventually shot away from it. Yeah, I'm staying away. Let me see. Hold, let me look at this real quick with Arizona. Just because I've, I've said this, right? They, they beat a ranked Oregon State last week. And they beat Washington State, who was previously ranked. They lost by two to USC. They only lost by seven to Washington, and they only lost by seven to Mississippi State. Like they're that team that eludes being ranked, but is always a threat. I'm not going to do anything, but I, I, uh, if it was three and a half, I'd probably take Arizona. Uh, yeah, I don't think. 
don't think it's a bad pick. I think that why is Arizona always hanging in with them? Because Pac-12 sucks. Like, I mean, that's your narrative. I get it, but I. But why is it like all the Pac-12 teams are like are close? Right, but they only lost by seven to an SEC team, in Mississippi State. Now, Mississippi State is not at the top of that conference, but if you're looking at those two conferences, you would expect the low, the the lower half of the SEC to dominate the lower half of the pack. And they didn't dominate. I mean, they Mississippi State won, but it was only by seven. Yeah. And that was at Mississippi State, so Arizona traveled. Yeah, I get it. I don't know. I'm not doing it. I just I think Arizona is one of those interesting teams to think about week to week. Maybe next week. Maybe next week, Muff. Mm-hmm. Which brings into our best bets. Jim, are you ready? Or do you have to? I'm going to go for 10 this week. and I'm, I'm just going to do it. If mm-hmm. it bites me, it bites me. Then just make it happen, buddy. Yeah. 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 Do it. Tell us your 10. Um, I'm going to go with Boston College in the college world first. So Boston College plus two and a half at Syracuse. Minnesota minus one and a half against Illinois. Oklahoma minus five and a half at Oklahoma State. Rice plus 12 and a half against SMU. Alabama minus three at LSU. Clemson hosting, minus... hosting hosting LSU. Yeah, sorry. That's a that's a big I think it's My a big fault. deal in that game. Clemson minus no. Oh, what the hell am I doing? Give me Notre Dame plus three. Minus three. No, Notre Dame. Oh no, yeah, Notre Dame is minus three. Minus three at Clemson. Ole Miss minus three at Texas A&M. That's my college slate. Then give me the Eagles minus three at the Cowboys. Hosting the Cowboys. Damn it. All to hell. I got this all jacked up. Give me the Chargers on Monday night minus three. Need to fix that. And give me the Ravens minus five and a half. Versus the Seahawks. Alex? I am going to go with Notre Dame minus three at Clemson. Ole Miss minus three versus Texas A&M. Missouri plus 15 and a half at Georgia. Kansas plus two and a half at Iowa State. Washington minus three and a half at USC. And then in the NFL, I will go with the Browns minus seven and a half versus the Cardinals. And the Eagles minus three versus the Cowboys. All right, and I'm going to go with Air Force to cover 18 and a half hosting Army. James Madison to cover five and a half traveling to Georgia State. Iowa Northwestern under 31 and a half. Michigan to cover 32 and a half hosting Purdue. The Patriots to cover three and a half hosting the Commanders. The Browns to cover seven and a half hosting the Cardinals. And the Chargers Jets under 41 and a half points. I feel good about this. This is this feels good. This feels right. It's bounce back spot for everybody. Yeah. Warming up. Everybody improves this week. Let's do it. All right. Which brings us to our specialty picks. Starting with the Mike All oh, Stop Hit Stick Pick of the Week. Have a pow pow. Do we have any team rides? I don't know. I don't think we, we do. do. Um Muff and I both have Browns. Jim and I have a couple. No, we have Notre Dame and Ole Miss and the Eagles. Do you guys have any in common? Mm, I, I mean, we that. have games, but we don't have the same bets. Right. <laughs> I'll leave it to Jim as the winner to toss out a game for discussion. Oh, dude, from last week. so much pressure. Hmm. Heavy as the head. I'm going to shy away from your entire slate, Muffin. 
Oh well, god. Hence why we don't. You know what? I like the Air Force Army game. Yeah, but I'm the only one that's on that. I don't really care. I don't <laughs> think Alex is against it. I'm not against it. So I'm okay with that. I I like that bet. How do you feel about the Browns versus the Cardinals? Yeah, personally, I like that better than the Air Force bet. If we're looking at games that I Are have, we both on that. Yeah. yeah, we're both on the Browns. Okay, go for it. No, that's okay. I mean, if you don't like it, if you like something else better, I just yeah, you put none of your own it... games up, Jim. Okay, so I'm okay with it. Yeah, because I wanted to. Pick, I wanted to be like something somebody would agree with. No, just because you have games doesn't mean I don't agree with them. It just means that I'm not like solidly on board with them. That's why I was wondering what you wanted to do. If you had to put up one of your games, which one would you pick? Yeah. This I would take the Eagles. Yeah, I mean, I'm on them, so I like that. <clears throat> yeah, well, let's go with you two. Do the Eagles game. No, I mean, that's why I would put up for the Mike Allstott hit stick pick of the week. There we go. The Mike Allstott hit stick pick of the week is the Eagles to cover three hosts. Ding the boys. In the them boys. Mid- them boys in the Midwest mobster risky pick of the week. Get out of here. Kansas. I mean, Ooh. I don't have any plus point bets, so I'm going to leave you Ooh. two to toss games out for discussion. Where's that at, Alex? Kansas. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. I like mm-hmm. that. How do you feel, Muff? I had no plus point games, so I don't. I have nothing to put up there against it, so we're just going to go with it. Well, I like it. Kansas money line dog at Iowa State. Rock truck Jayhawk. The last ball season. So last one season. All right, which means the Lolita Hohel of a parlay. Wait, come on. Alan. This is slowly, I don't know if it's devolving or evolving into a Goonied reference. <laughs> All right. Um, the question is: Is Alex banished or do we keep Alex in this week? No, because the All Star lost, so like it was doomed anyway. Okay. So Jim, you get the first pick. Fuck. Uh, you win, and then you get upset for all the spoils that come from winning. Give me the Chargers minus three at the Jets. Okay. Alex, <clears throat> uh, you, you can pick. I lost. All right. Um, I'm gonna go with just because I think I know what Alex will go with. If I do this, I'm gonna go Air Force to cover 18 and a half mm. hosting Army. That's a good one too. I think I know where Alex is gonna lead now. Uh, Kansas. What do you think I was going to do? I was between Ole Miss and Kansas. I thought you could hear the Browns. That I was kind of looking. Well, I didn't even think about the NFL, really. Shit. <laughs> Shit. I hate when this happens. I, th- I mean, that don't. I just thought that that was. No, no, you're, you're right. I really didn't even look at my NFL games. But I do like that one. What do we have right now? We have three two, NFLs. Two, we have two NFLs. Yeah, give me Kansas plus two and a half at Iowa State. Let's keep it two and two. Sometimes we get heavy on one. I don't want to like. We just get disappointed. Yeah, I mean, we're always it. disappointed with this damn <laughs> parlay. This is the week. This is the week. This is the week that the parlay hits. This is the week that we all have winning records. This is the week that everyone gets above five hundred. And this is the week where you can tail us all the way to the brinks, backing up right into your driveway. Garage door opens and all the money piles in because next week you're going to see a payday. 